what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a look at the recently released Ambernick Win 600. Now this is actually their newest model coming in with a new color scheme blue 16 gigabytes of RAM instead of 8 and a 1 terabyte M.2 SSD. And when it comes to the newly upgraded RAM module here, instead of running at 2400 megahertz, it's actually running at 3200 megahertz, which should definitely help out with the GPU performance. When the Win 600 was initially released, we took a look at the white version on the channel that had 8 gigabytes of RAM running at 2400 megahertz and a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. Personally, huge fan of the new color scheme here. I think it looks great. In the past, they only offered a black and a white version. And really, when it comes down to it, not much else has changed here except for that higher capacity storage and RAM right out of the box. Plus, like I mentioned, that RAM is running at a faster speed. But with the unit I received, I did have to go into the BIOS and set it to 3200 MHz instead of 2400. Not a big deal, it's actually pretty easy to do. Taking a look around the device, on the bottom here we've got our speaker outputs. This does use dual stereo speakers. We also have a 3.5mm audio jack down here so we can easily add headphones. Moving over to the right hand side, we've got a dedicated keyboard button and when we press this in Windows, it'll bring up the on-screen keyboard. And we've also got a function switch over here, which will allow us to turn the built-in controls into kind of a mouse so you can easily navigate your operating system. And when it's time to game, you can set it right back to controller mode and it acts as an X input device. On the right hand side, we've got a volume rocker and our power slash sleep button. And finally, moving around to the top here, we've got a full function USB type C port. This does allow for display out so we can connect to an external monitor. And they've also included a full size USB 3.1 port. I'm a huge fan of the D-pads that Ambernick uses. I think they've done a really good job over the years and they've definitely taken feedback from the community and applied it here. Now, one thing that some people might not like are the analog sticks here. I mean, they work perfectly fine, but they're switch-like analog sticks and some people just don't like these smaller units. But another great thing this has going for it is they opted to use conductive pads under all of the buttons from the start, select, A, B, X, Y, your shoulder buttons and your trigger buttons. But unfortunately, when it does come to the triggers, they're non-analog, so they're basically on or off. Taking a look at the specs of the Win 600, for the CPU or the APU rather, we've got the AMD Athlon Silver 3050E. Now with the original model, 8 gigs of RAM, you can opt for the 3020E, but if it was me, I would always go for the higher end model here. We've got two cores, four threads with a clock up to 2.8 gigahertz, and built-in Vega 3 graphics running it up to 1000 megahertz. Like we mentioned, the blue model here does come with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM running at 3200 megahertz, but it's still only single channel, and we'll pull the back off of this and take a look at the internals in a second. We've also got that 1TB M.2 SSD, a 5.94 inch IPS display at 1280 by 720 with 10 points of touch running at 60 hertz. I do think it looks pretty good. I love the size of this thing. It also has AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.2, a 39 watt hour battery with 45 watt quick charging capabilities. And this is running Windows 10 out of the box, but over on their website, they offer a version of SteamOS that you can install really easily and Bato Serra. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Windows 10 performance, and in my next one, we will swap over to Botocera and SteamOS. Real quick, I did want to give you a look at the internals here. So the back actually comes off pretty easily with four of these hex screws, and as you can see, it's actually laid out really nicely. We've got easy access to everything in here, from the battery to that M.2 SSD and the RAM module. I really wish from the get-go they would have used dual-channel RAM here. It would have definitely made a difference with GPU performance. But given the space they're working with here in the Win 600, they went with single channel. And I do want to mention that you can always upgrade the base model to one terabyte and 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can up the RAM speed on that. So you don't have to go out and buy the blue version just for that extra storage and RAM. So for this video, I want to jump right into some gaming and emulation. We're also going to test out a little bit of cloud gaming here using PlayStation Plus for PC. So we'll get to that in a second. But let's go ahead and test out some PC games first. And first up, we've got Forza Horizon 5, we're at low settings, 720p, with resolution scale set to performance. I've also got this locked at 30fps. So V-Sync is basically set to half here. And uh, with this lower-end dual-core APU, this is really where it's going to be with something like this. And if you take a look at Afterburner, I have taken the TDP up to 18 watts from the stock 15 just to get a little more out of it. 
Moving over to something a little lighter. This is one of my favorite indie games right now, The Art of Rally. We've got a low medium mix here at 720p, and this will run at 60. So I've got it locked, and one of the big reasons I lock these lower end APUs is because when it's unlocked, it starts to overrun that GPU, and you'll start seeing dips under 60. But with VSync set up on this thing, we can run this at a constant 60 all day, and it's a really nice experience. Next on the list, we've got Skyrim. This is actually the OG version. Low settings, 720p, running great at 60. I mean, this is a great game to play in a handheld, and I completely understand that it is available on the Switch. But uh, if you take a look at Afterburner, I've got the TDP set at 15 watts. That's what it is out of the box, and it runs this game just fine. Another one I wanted to test here was GTA 5, and the way we've got this set up right now is 720p normal settings, and we can get a little over 30 on average with this. I would go ahead and half that VSync from the settings, and you could play this at 30 on this device. I was actually pretty surprised to see how well it's running. And the final PC game I wanted to test here was Doom Eternal. So with this, we're at the lowest of the low settings. I also have resolution scale set to 50%, and unfortunately this little Athlon just can't keep up with this game, and it really comes down to those Vega 3 graphics only running at 1000 MHz. Alright, so the next thing I wanted to take a look at was a little bit of cloud gaming. Now this is a bit different. Um, it's actually PlayStation Plus for PC, and this is something I've been using for the past couple months on my low-end PCs. It actually works out really well as long as you have a decent internet connection, and we've got AC Wi-Fi with this. So basically, instead of streaming from your own PS4 or PS5, this is using Sony servers, and we can play PS5 games on this unit. We've got a mixture of PlayStation, PlayStation 2, there's some PS3, PS4, and PS5 stuff on here to choose from, but you do need to be a PS Plus member. So right now, I'm playing Spider-Man Miles Morales right on this, and I've tested a lot of different cloud services. This is one of my favorites so far. Now it's time to move over to some emulation, and in this video we're just going to test a few because I really want to do a dedicated Linux emulation video, either using Botocera or another distro. But first up, we've got Dreamcast here, runs really well. I'm using the ReDream emulator, and I've noticed that with the latest Radeon drivers, I am getting a few graphical issues, but I'm not using the development build of ReDream, which definitely might help out. When it comes to PSP emulation on the Win 600, I've had really good luck, even with the harder to emulate stuff. I just went with Dirt real quick, looks really good here, and this is one of those games that does fluctuate between 30 and 60 without a patch. I've got the 60 FPS patch on here, we're upscaled to 720p, and it's running fine. I also wanted to throw in a little bit of GameCube emulation, and first up we've got Automotalista, we're at the native res, Vulcan back in, really great performance here. I've seen a couple dips here and there, but nothing too major, I mean it's running at 60, we're not pushing anywhere close to 15 watts with it, but I did run into an issue with F-Zero GX. So the GameCube version of F-Zero struggles really badly on this device. No matter what I do, I've tried the Vulcan back in, I've tried DirectX 11, DirectX 12, even OpenGL. We're on Vulcan right now, and in some areas it's fine, but then it really falls on its face. A lot of people have run into this issue with this specific game using the Dolphin emulator on the Win 600. So yeah, basically we're working with the same performance in Windows 10 as we were with the original Win 600. The only difference really being we've got more storage and more RAM, but like I mentioned, you can upgrade the original model just like this one sits right now. And in my initial video, I actually did add faster RAM to it, so we basically got the same performance. Having that one terabyte drive really does allow you to add a ton of games to this thing, and really when it comes down to it, it's not a AAA gaming machine, so those 100 or 150 gigabyte games, you really don't even need to add to this. So personally, what I would do with this is partition the one terabyte drive correctly and have, let's say, SteamOS and Windows on it, or you could go with SteamOS and Botocera. 
And speaking of Botocera, that's the next video I want to make on this. Now, I've seen much better emulation performance in Linux on this machine than I have in Windows, and we'll definitely get down to it. So if there's anything specific you want to see running in Botocera, let me know in the comments below. And of course, the biggest factor in deciding if you want to pick up the Win 600 or not is the price. And this is definitely going to affect a lot of people's decisions. So for the very base model, with the Athlon 3020e, 8 gigs of RAM and a 128 gigabyte drive, it's $299. For either the white or black version with the 3050e, it's $374. And for the new blue version with 16 gigabytes of RAM and that one terabyte drive, it's $474. And with all of the other x86 handhelds on the market, specifically the Steam Deck, this might be a hard sale to some people. But in the end, it's always up to you. If you're interested, I'll leave a couple links in the description. And like I mentioned, if there's anything at all you want to see running on this in my next video, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.